fellas, welcome back to the channel. A uh, little warning, this video isn't going to be the normal, the normal fun, the normal happy. This is going to be a little of the opposite. Uh, we're going to talk about the tournament or the tournament. How do you guys say it? Tournament or tournament? I say tournament. I don't know. That's weird. And how that was an absolute disaster and how it was, it was, it was kind of beyond. It was sad almost. And there's a lot of hard work that went into it. But in the end, a lot of testing uh, wasn't done and relying on a system without any kind of backup or anything like that. Uh, what was the huge downside? And the next thing that we're going to, well, actually, let's talk about this one first. We'll get back to the War Thunder stuff later. Is Flight 1492. I'm sure you guys have heard about this. This is the Superjet 100, the S100, that had a crash landing that resulted in the aircraft engulfing in flame. And in the final result, claimed 41 lives. And the reason why I'm talking about this is that I'm not 100% sure that this is going to be fact, but it feels that way. It's the way the tarmac looked. It's the way the airport the airport looked. We, my aircraft, which was an Airbus 330, I don't know the ident. I can probably find it out in my luggage. But we were the last plane to land before Flight 1492 came in. So I was I was there at the forefront. And it was really strange when we left the aircraft. We, we walked down the stairs. We didn't have a jetway, so we walked flat onto the tarmac. And it... it, it for some reason, it didn't cross my mind that there was a plane accident. The ground crew were a little like, come on, guys, we got to go. We got to go. We, we can't be here. But it wasn't like it didn't seem like it was an emergency in the and in my brain. I thought it was a, a, a gas truck or, you know, a, a vehicle to fill the planes that might have gotten to an accident. Ivan was too drunk, ran off the road or something like that. It it didn't fully set in that this was an aircraft accident until I saw it with my own eyes, until I saw the the aircraft after the uh, emergency crews doused it with the uh, fire repellent or the uh, the foam. And a lot of people are questioning the response time of the emergency crews. And I, I questioned it as well. There, there's two scenarios which, which I can see here. From my viewing of the aircraft and it burning and it just staying there, burning and burning, it, it, it was a really slow response. But we have to remember that this aircraft, now this is just from the news outlets and the reporters that I've been following, is that this aircraft was struck by lightning or some other weather element fried a lot of its computer, or its computer systems or electronic systems. One, the autopilot wasn't working. Two, the aircraft couldn't radio an emergency to let the airport know that we need help. Something's not right here. It didn't give the crews any time to get their fire trucks, the emergency vehicles ready. And then we have to look at, was their transponder working? Now, in an emergency, you squawk. It's called a squawk. It emits a signal that ATC can pick up, and it will let them know that there's an emergency. The squawk is 7700. And I said before, a lot of this aircraft systems were fried. And if they did put the squawk out, 7700, and it wasn't picked up by ATC, then the emergency services, in my opinion, respond responded pretty rapidly. You got to understand that the firefighters aren't in their trucks with the key on, with their full suit ready to go. Many times when an aircraft is in distress, plane will radio ATC, then ATC will radio the emergency services to get ready, get prepared, and how prepared. But with a plane landing like a ghost, just from my take on it, they responded pretty quick without any forewarning or anything like that. And that's all I'm going to comment on Flight 1492. That's the only controversy that I witnessed myself. The other, the other controversies are, are pilot error and uh, the passengers were grabbing their suitcase and stuff out from the overhead bins. I mean, there, there, there's one thing I don't know. I mean, the way that I would see myself reacting to a situation like that is that I would, just, I would be climbing over the seats. I would be bulldozing through people to, you know, get out. But that's all hindsight. You, you don't know what really happened in there, and you don't know how you would really react in a situation like that. When humans are in shock, we go back to basics. We, we, we carry on like we were doing. 
So I don't know how I would really react. And yeah, absolutely horrible. And now on to the War Thunder tournament. I, I want to take a second before we get into the details of it and just apologize. Apologize for stringing thousands of people along for hours when in reality it, it, it was already a failure. I personally really would have wanted to cut it or to, you know, stop the stream and reevaluate what was going on, how we can fix stuff, then just putting it on hold and say, we'll be right back. Um, but I, it just it makes me cringe. So what happened? The whole tournament was pretty much relying on one piece of software, which would gather the teams, uh, gather the hosts of the tournament, let them choose what era, 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 World War II, Cold War, Naval, and then pick the maps. That failed apparently. And when that fails, and that's the building block, building blocks of the whole tournament, well, the uh, tournament fails. There was no backup. There, it was all eggs in baskets, and you guys know the, the, the result of it. Next are the uh, giveaway codes. Now, I don't know if there was a miscommunication, you know, lost in translation, a language barrier, but I was told that there were there would be two codes. And in OBS, there were two options to show and hide and show and hide to where we could have one code after the first game and one code after the second game. However, that wasn't the case. And there was a duplicate for both sources in OBS. So when I said, you know, guys, here's a second code, um, you saw me put it up on the screen and you saw me flickering it on and off, trying to tell the difference if this is the right one or if this is the same one. And in the end, it was the same PNG uploaded for two different uh, sources. So it didn't matter which one I picked. It was the same one from the first game that have, that has already been fully redeemed. So I'm sorry about wasting you guys time. Sorry about taking you guys for a ride. Huge learning experience for War Thunder. If, if they ever do anything like that again, they're going to need a, a stage director, someone who's able to tell us when we're live or not live because me and Bruce were sitting in there while one of the guys was trying to figure out what the hell was wrong. We were just sitting in there. He comes in 30 minutes later and says, hey, the second game's going on and we're just sitting there like, why didn't anyone tell us? We're just sitting here waiting for the green light. They, they need a stage director or a director. They need a problem solver. They need uh, at least three people to really bring an event like that uh, to normality. Because having one person doing all the roles was not a good idea. You can't hire a chef, a waiter, uh, a, a dishwasher, and a janitor, and, and, and just one with all those roles and expect the restaurant to function correctly. It's not going to happen. So again, I apologize. I'm back in North Carolina right now. I'm moving to my new house tomorrow. So um, expect videos to be kind of here and there while I fully get set up. I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for the ongoing support. And here's to getting back to 100% to start creating some stale old memes on the channel. Guys, have a great day. Be safe. Until next time, peace out.